In a previous video, I gave you a quick look at Metal Bullets and what I've designed so far. Again, Metal Bullets is a project I'm working on that is an HTML5 first-person shooter that allows end users to easily create levels of their own in Blender 3D, export them and easily import them into an HTML format. Ori has all the settings and basic functionality of a first-person shooter. In the last video, I gave you a quick look at what the game looks like so far. And again, I hope that it will be a game in its own, as well as a platform for people to build on. But right now, I'm going to give you a quick look on how it functions. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more a quick overview on the concept of how it works. We're going to look at things such as floors, walls, doors, and teleporters, all easily created in Blender 3D, simply labeled that is easily exported for use on Android and iOS devices as well as desktop devices running Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. Uh, basically any modern operating system with a modern web browser can play this game as long as the hardware is supported. And uh, I just hope that this is a project that uh, not only grows in what I'm creating, but grows as a community and maybe I can get some help from you guys as well. So here we go with not a tutorial, but a quick overview on how Metal Bullets currently works and the basic concept of how things will work in the future. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Okay, so this is going to be a quick overview. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's just going to give you a quick look on how to develop levels for Metal Bullets, the first-person shooter in HTML5 using Babylon and Canon JS, uh, for you to create first-person shooters with ease in Blender. So uh, there should be a link in the description of this, but I'm going to download the, the zip file for the current, uh, at the time of recording this video, version, although I'm daily doing updates. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say save link as and I'm going to just put this zip file into uh, my web directory. Save it there, shouldn't take long. Already done because it's right now it's 12 megabytes, most of that's just textures and blend files. Uh, so I will now go into a terminal or your file browser and I'm just going to unzip that, f that zip file. Okay, it unzipped it. Took a second there. And now I will go to my local host uh, and I will go into that folder that I just unzipped, which is called Metal Bullets uh, version 0.1b in this case. And I'm going to click uh, Blender Scene. And I'm going to use the Babylon JS example since the 3 JS is kind of not developing that anymore. So there we go. Here's the default uh, scene. P to pause the music. Uh, and I showed you around this level in a previous video. So let me go to Blender now. Okay, we're in Blender, default scene. Let's default delete the default cube. Okay, spacebar add plane. Again, I'm gonna move, be moving kind of fast. This is not a tutorial, it's an overview. So I added a plane that will be our floor. I'm gonna add a uh, material to it and I'll just make it blue, like a light blue. There we go. So now at this point, we need to export it to a Babylon uh, JS scene. Now, if you have to go to the Babylon JS uh, website, there is a uh, Python, uh, yeah, Python script that you add to your add-ons. It's a simple thing. You just put this one file into your Blender add-ons folder and then restart Blender. And then, again, this is not a tutorial on that. Uh, there will be tutorials in the future. I'm going to go to add-ons and type in uh, Babylon and enable it. Okay, so now all I have to do is hit spacebar, type in Babylon, and there it is, export Babylon JS scene. And then where do I want to save it? I'm just going to override the default scene in what I just downloaded. So under scenes, youth house, and it's going to be called scene Babylon. So I need to clean a lot of this up. A lot of this, Some of this is textures, some of this is old files uh, at this point. Um, but again, early development in my program here. So uh, scenes Babylon export. And so we, since we exported over this scene, all I have to do is come back here and hit F5 to refresh. And look, there is our blue floor. As soon as I start moving, uh, physics will take over and I will fall right through that floor.
<laughs> so we're looking at a black screen now because I just fell all the way through. If I hit F5 again, P to pause the music, um, start moving, boom, I fall through that floor. Because we did not tell my code that this is a floor. Everything in Metal Bullets is based on labeling in Blender. So let's go back to Blender. Uh, we have the plane here selected. We'll go to our objects panel here. And you can see it's called plane. What we want to call it is floor. With a capital F, it is case sensitive. That's all we have to do. Now we can hit spacebar and re-export it. Just override the last file. Hit F5 in our browser here. And now you can see we have some physics. We're not falling through the floor. I can still walk off the edge. Whoop. Okay. So we have a floor, let's add in a wall. So we'll add a cube, and I'll scale that up some. I'll scale it down this way. Let's get in the front view and grab it. Move it up here, and we'll give it a material. We'll make it, I don't know, some ugly yellow color. Again, I can just now hit spacebar, type in Babylon to export to Babylon. Once I have that add-on loaded, override and refresh our browser and you can see there's the wall but we didn't label it as a wall so we can walk right through it if you want an object you can walk right through that's all you have to do uh, but we we want it to be a wall so let's go back to blender we have that object selected and we'll go to our objects panel here and we will rename it wall with a capital w be sure to hit enter there else it won't take and so wall Again, now all I have to do is export it, refresh my browser, and there we have that yellow wall, and you can see I'm, I can't walk through it. It's got physics, it's got collision detection. Okay, going back to Blender, uh, let's take our lamp here, move it over, and let's just clone it a few times so we have a little more lighting, things are a little dark. Okay, so we have floor and we have a wall. Let's hit shift D to clone this wall and move it right about here. And that's all we have to do because by default you can see when we cloned it over here it called it wall with a capital W dot zero zero one. The dot zero zero one does not matter. As long as it starts with wall with a capital W um, my code will know this is a wall. So all we have to do at this point is export it again and then go back to our browser and refresh. You can see it's a bit brighter now because I added some more lamps, but we have our wall here that we can't walk through and our wall here that we can't walk through. Let's add in a door. So we'll come back to Blender here. We'll add in a cube. We'll scale it down this way. Actually, let's scale it up this way. Grab on X, scale it down until it's right about there. Scale it on the Y right like that, go to front view, grab Z, and we'll move it up to here. <clears throat> and we'll give it a material. Let's make it, I don't know, red. How's that? So we have a red door. Of course, you can add textures. If you add want to add textures, you have to be sure to use UV coordinates, because if you just load the texture without UV coordinates, it's not going to load properly. We'll go over that once the game's more developed and I start doing tutorials on it. Okay, so Here's our cube, let's go here, and now we want to label it a door, so capital D, O, O, R. Now, there's different types of doors, well, there will be. Right now, the only type of door I have designed is a door down, a door that moves down into the ground. Uh, in the future, we'll have doors that move up or slide to the side and possibly that swing out. Um, but right now, we have door and we'll say dot down. So my code goes, okay, let's look at this first column. Yeah, you think of the name as, as an array divided up by dots. So it goes, okay, first portion of this, this uh, name, it says it's a door. So while the game is loading, it goes, this is a door. It's going to act like a door. What type of door is it? Well, let's look at the second column. It says down. Well, it's a down door, so it's going to move down. So right now we have labeled that. We have the door in position, and we can export it. Go back to our browser, refresh, and as you can see, there's our door. Now, if I walk up to it and hit spacebar to activate it, plays the default door sound, but you see it only goes halfway down. Let me explain a little bit more 
on how doors work. First of all, they're on a five second delay, so by default. So they go down, five seconds later, they move up. But again, it only went halfway. Why is this? Well, the way the door works, first off, we have our floor plane here. So you can see the floor is intersecting it. If I was to grab and move this door up so it's above this floor plane, and I was to re-export and refresh, it will play the door sound, but it doesn't move at all. And five seconds later, we'll play the sound again, but the door does not move. It's because, and I've changed the way the doors have worked a few times. I used to calculate where they were and their height, and they move that so much. Um, but I think that the way I have it now is a better way. What it does is it looks for a floor that intersects. So it has to be intersecting a floor, even a little bit. That, that's good enough. It was That's good. If it was up here, that would be bad. It's got to be intersecting the floor at least a little tiny bit. So when the door loads, it looks, okay, what floor am I intersecting? That is what I'm going to calculate my movement to. Next. So we did that originally, but it only moved halfway. Why is that? Well, each object has its little center point here. Well, that, that center point is what moves to the floor level. So if you wanted it to only move halfway for whatever reason, you want it to be a wall that they can look over but can't jump over, or maybe you want to do some sort of stairs that come dropping down, uh, you would move that accordingly. But if we want it to move all the way down, we're going to select that object, hit tab, make sure all the entire object, all the vertices are uh, selected, hit G, and I'm going to move this down. So if I was to do it here, a little tiny bit of the door would be sticking up at the end. If I would do it here, it's going to drop down way below the floor, which is fine. Um, you don't want to go too far because then the animation would be real quick because it is on a five second delay. But if we wanted to move it so that it drops just below or just at the floor, we're going to align the center dot up with the top of the door. Tab to get out of edit mode, and then at this point we can move the door back up, remembering that it has to intersect the floor at least a little bit. So where's our floor? There's our floor. We're intersecting it. The dot's at the top, so it should move down to the floor level. Hope that all makes sense. Export, reload, and come up. Now if I hit spacebar, it drops all the way down, and I can walk through, and five seconds later, it moves back up. And again, it's got collision detection, so I can't walk through it while it's up. Spacebar, and I can walk through again. Okay, so we have floors, walls, doors. Um, the next part, the, the only other really thing I've worked on so far is teleporters. So let's go and design a teleporter. Again, a teleporter can look like whatever you want. Just like a wall and a door can look like whatever you want them to look like. It's all based on the name. Teleporters are the same way. So I'm going to make cubes that we can walk into, um, but you can also make them invisible and then have an area that looks like a teleporter. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to say add a cube. And I'm going to grab and I'm going to move that here. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to scale it up a bit. And let's give it a color here of a darker blue or purplish color. There we go. Okay, so we have this. And again, right now it's just a cube that we can walk through. It has no collision detection, no intersection detection. It's just an object with no phys physics or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the object name. And again, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it teleporter, spelling it properly. Because if you don't spell it properly, it's not going to work. Enter. Okay, so it's a teleporter, um, but how does it know where to teleport to? Well, it finds another teleporter with the same POS, is what I call it, for position. So I'm going to hit dot POS. And originally in my code, you had to label this POS. Now, uh, I think I've rewritten it. It doesn't have to be labeled POS, but you want to call it something that uh, has letters in it, not just numbers, because if you just put numbers, it's going to renumber it when you clone it and cause problems. Anyway, so I'm just going to call this POS1, just to keep it simple. I'm going to go into top view here. I'm going to hit Shift D, clone, and I'm going to move the clone over here. Now you'll notice the clone is called teleporter.pos1.001. This 001 means nothing to our code. And also the POS part is not case sensitive. Well, it's case sensitive as in these two have to be case sensitive as the same. So if you capitalize it here, it has to be capitalized there. But if you clone it like we just did, everything should be fine. So teleporter 
POS. So what my code does is when you walk into a, one of these teleporters, well, when it teleporter loads, it goes, okay, looks at the name, it goes, okay, this is a teleporter. What's its position? Not really its position, but its POS. What's its POS? And it's called POS1 here. So it looks at all other teleporter objects and finds any other teleporter object that has POS1. And once that matches, it goes, okay, it says POS1, it checks to make sure it's not the current teleporter. It goes, okay, so this is, it says POS1, it's not myself, then what's its position? And it loads that position as to where it's teleporting to. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's a little more technical aspect of it. In Blender, all you have to know is teleporter, and then the second column is the same as where you want to teleport. So we're starting off here with just two teleporters to teleport back and forth. All we have to do is Babylon export, refresh our browser here, and there's one of our teleporters. And if I walk into it, <clears throat> nothing happens. Um, that's a little collision thing that I'll have to work on in the code. Uh, what we'll do here to fix that problem is move the cube up a little bit. Basically, the camera is lifted up off the ground a little bit, and right now it's going over the cube and not actually touching the cube. Actually, there's a sphere around the camera that's not touching the cube, um, but just moving those up a little bit, and that's something that I'll, I just have to tweak in the code. But for now, if for some reason that happens, just move the cubes up or scale them up, and we should be fine now, I think. There we go, so we teleported. Uh, and I can teleport back. Again, there's a five second delay on the teleporters. You have to let them refresh for five seconds before we walk through again. So there we have the two teleporters. They're teleporting us. So I can go like this, and I teleported back through. Let's go back to Blender and add in another set of teleporters just so you understand them a little bit better. What I can do is I can just clone the same exact teleporter, right? But now we have three that say POS1, which is not good. That's gonna cause problems. We want to rename this one. I'll just call it POS2, or 32 would be fine, as long as it's, there's only other one other one with that match. And right now there's not, so I'm gonna do a Shift D and move it over here. Now you'll notice that it says POS2.001, and this one's, or 000, and this one's POS2.002. Again, this tailing number does not matter. What matters with teleporters at this point is teleporter, capital T, POS2. And in fact, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab this teleporter. I'm gonna move it way up here. So it's way up high. All I have to do is say export, overwrite, refresh, coming in here. Okay, so we have a teleporter here. This is our original one. So we teleported through. Um, and I believe this is the one we just created that will teleport us up to that one there. So I'm gonna go through it and I should fall Boom, down. Obviously we can't go back through that one because it's up too high, but I can always just, you know, go through it again like this. So that is a quick look. And again, no teleporters work for five seconds after teleporting. It's just uh, the way I've come up with so far that prevents you from teleporting back and forth really quick. Um, of course, that might change in the future. Again, Metal Bullets is in very early development and so far it's just me again if you'd like to help i'm looking for programmers and designers and musicians and artists anyone who wants to help uh the code is over at github github.com forward slash metal x 1000 will bring up all my projects i got a few up there this one's called metal bullets um one last thing i want to show you that uh has nothing to do with what i wrote it's just a uh, part of the babylon js and the um Canon JS code is I can add in a cube. Now again, by default, a cube, let's move this here, yeah, so we can see it. A cube is just a cube. If I put that there, it will just float there and it can walk through it. But in Blender, uh, if I go to physics and I can say this is a rigid body and I change this to a box and then I can export this you'll see when I refresh this, that box fell. And it fell through the floor plane. So again, I'll refresh, and you see it falls, but it continues to fall. Um, that's because we have no physics as far as the, the physics in the world, the Babylon JS scene, 
uh, set for that ground plane. It has a collision detection with the camera, but not necessarily an object like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to now choose our floor plane and create a rigid body, and we'll change that to box. Uh, and we're not done yet, because now if we export and refresh, you'll notice our floor plane is falling as well, which is not good. Because uh, now if I go, I fall. Ah. And so now what I want to do is change it. I'm going to choose that floor plane. And over here for mass, I'm just going to put the mass down to zero. And uh, as close to zero as possible, I believe, is the way you do this. I haven't messed with this too much. Again, this is not part of my code. This is just part of how Babylon imports stuff. It imports uh, some physics stuff. I'm going to say, um, uh, yeah, export it. And if I'm right, there we go. So setting that mass to as low as you can allows that plane to stay and that cube hits it. So again, if I refresh, you can see the cube there has some physics. It does not have physics though with the player as of yet. Uh, again, in the future, you might be able to push things around. It should be easy to do by adding some physics. Oop, teleported into Blender. Anyway, uh, this video has been kind of long, but I showed you basically all that I've worked on with this so far. Again, you can add textures as you've seen in the original uh, default scene that I've created so far. I thank you for watching. I do hope that some of you will think about helping with this project. Again, my website is filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description, as well as a link to all the files you know, uh, up on GitHub on my site. You can test this game out. Um, there should be a link in the description uh, to a playable version if your hardware and browser support it. Um, also, as uh, you can download all the files. And I hope that I do get people, especially, uh, again, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, if I hit escape here twice, it brings up a music menu. Yeah, it's ugly. Um, so someone with uh, good uh, CSS and graphics skills can maybe help me make these menus look a little bit nicer. Um, and I definitely need help with code. So this is just a quick look at an early project. Uh, don't don't criticize me too hard for the the what you've seen because again it's early. But again, the the main goal of this project is to be able to use Blender to easily create games and levels uh, that are playable in HTML5 on a multitude of hardware and browsers. Um, essentially, making uh, a game that's cross-platform as long as uh, the hardware, if the hardware is supported, you should be able to find a browser that's supported. Uh, again, I'm using Firefox, but Chrome will usually work well as well with most hardware. Uh, well, I don't say most hardware, with a lot of hardware. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great day. I thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, have a great day.